Why is she thick? Well, I just have to try out this adventure, you guys. This is the first time I am watching what so many of you suggested to me. Rubber. First thing that's on my mind is why the hell are there so many chairs in the damn road? Maybe they're trying to stop something from, you know, chairs though. This movie is going to throw me for a loop. I have no idea what to expect here. Most of this intro consists of just wooden chairs. I mean, is the movie called Wood? Anyways, we zoom into this guy who has a whole bunch of binoculars because, you know, one person can never have too many. Maybe they're for all the chairs. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being so stupid right now. All right, let's continue. We meet this guy who seems to be just waiting for a ride. And when his ride comes in, I swear to freaking God, I swear to all the chairs that are set up that I assume he set up, yeah, you just realize how useless it is that they're there. Like, what is the whole point of the chairs in the first place? Just the way he comes in, it's like he's, tr this movie is so freaking confusing. I have no idea what the hell's going on. and the sheer ridiculousness of this movie just has me so hurt. I don't even know how else to explain it. I don't know what's going on. This adventure is gonna be a good adventure because if it starts off like this, you know sky is the limit. Hold on one cotton picking second. Why, why are the chairs just imploding as he taps them? Okay, so even if he put the chairs here to, in the attempt to stop something, these are not very well made chairs. It's a good thing you put them out to their death because can you imagine someone goes to sit on these chairs and then it just breaks down into pieces like you just tossed a rock into a Minecraft skeleton? There is no fortitude of these chairs whatsoever. Just, just look at when he taps the chairs. I know this is a heavy car, but he just, Okay, now, now watch. You'd think it's when he runs over them, but no tap. That one breaks into pieces flattened, like Godzilla just sat on it. Tap the corner of that one. Ooh, just flying away. What the frick happened to these chairs? Are they held together by sticks of gum? Look at this one. Just check it out. Tap. The chair has met its doom. Soft tap. Annihilation. What kind of chairs are these? <laughs> Must be made in China. What the fuck? Okay, real quick. <gasps> Am I watching? <laughs> okay. Uh. Has anyone here ever watched this before? This is the first time seeing all of this for me. Has, has, uh, all right, let's, 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 let me guess what's gonna happen. That guy is a hostage and he has to, I don't know, make some kind of proposition for the guy in the car and the guy in the car has a gun and he might kill him. So, you know, the guy who looks like freaking Bert from Tremors in there. So this guy who has the binoculars is in trouble with these guys because of money. And the guy that's coming out of the trunk is one of the people they have a hostage as a hostage who's now working for them against his will. And he's gonna tell this guy, you have three days to give us the money or, or something like that. But then why is he in the desert? Why were the chairs there? This is just so intriguing. I want to see where it goes. What? Wait, what? what? That, that's a that's a police officer. What the fuck was he doing in the trunk? What the hell is going on? What is this movie? Honestly, I don't even know why I'm surprised. It's a movie about supposedly a tire going on its way and and killing people without being attached to anything. So yeah, there's there's that. In the Steven Spielberg movie, E.T., why is the alien brown? No reason. Oh, what happens over the next few minutes of this intro is this guy explaining exactly why these movies are so amazing. He gives a whole bunch of examples of other movies that have been made and why certain things make sense or don't make sense. And he's like, no reason. <laughs> why do certain characters do things or why did this happen? No reason. There wasn't some grand scheme as to why the director added it in there. It just doesn't make sense. And I like what he says at the end because everything that has happened up until this point is just total, just, just 
totality of nonsense. And he explains that so well and sets the stage for this movie so you can properly enjoy it. I know most movies that fall into this category, no one has to really tell you that, but him setting the air for this just makes me appreciate it so much more. Ladies, gentlemen, the film you are about to see today is an homage to the no reason, that most powerful element of style. I don't think I have to actually go in and explain to you like the whole intro of the movie because he basically did in case we weren't smart enough to figure it out. So that being said, let's get into this very crazy adventure that basically is built upon the element he just explained. A tire going around killing people, supposedly, because no reason that has a life on its own because no reason. I love it. I love it so much. Where did all these people come from? Oh, they're there for, you guessed it, no reason. God, I love this. I like how this guy's eyes are like perfectly symmetrical triangles. What are those triangles called again? Um, hypotenuse, I think? Yeah, his eyes look like hypotenuse triangles. I love this adventure so much because you come to realize that it's so meta that the movie actually, in trying not to make as much sense as possible, makes so much sense because they gave you the go ahead to be okay with it not making sense. It's the weird kind of reverse psychology I have ever seen in my life. It starts off where Glasses Guy gives everyone else the binoculars and tells them to get ready for the show. And at first you're like, what are they supposed to be watching? And then you realize that they themselves don't even know what they're supposed to be watching. And then later on you realize, and I'm saying realize a lot, that they're watching the show with us. This is where we first see Rubber come to life. And I'm only calling him Rubber because honestly, the tire is the main character of this movie, but you come to love him. You come to understand and relate to the tire. It's like some teacher, some film teacher made this on purpose for his students to prove that you can take anything and make it relatable to the audience. So the tire has a life to it. This is the first time we see it get up and have a mind of its own and explore its surroundings, recognizing that it is in existence. It takes its first few steps, it falls, it's almost like seeing a baby be born and testing out its environment for the first time. He falls down a few more times until he finally gets the hang of it. And you can tell, you can see the serious character growth with this character. I'm not even lying. Takes a step, he falls over, he's a little wobbly, and then he's like, I got the hang of this. I can actually roll by myself. Oops, I fell down again, just like a baby. We see this song and dance for quite a while, and that's character building right there. And then people remark. So this part I like right here because Rubber is very new to his surroundings. He's new to this world. He's never seen a lot of things before. And he's rolling along like, oh, I can walk now. Look at me. I can walk. He 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 he. This is so fun. Yay. And whoa, whoa, whoa. What the frick is that? Right here, we get to relate to him because he has no idea what this random piece of pollution is in the middle of where he's supposed to be rolling along. So what does he do? Just what any baby would do. Be scared of it, be wary of it, and then try to test out whether or not it has life and whether or not it can move like you can move. Rubber is so cute. It's like, what is this thing? Hmm, this is interesting. I have no idea what this is. Never seen this before. Must crush it. He starts to realize his own strength. He transforms from a very lovable character who's very innocent to a killing machine. And the thing is, even when he is being evil, to us, the spectators, who are also in the movie, can still relate to him because it's not coming from a place of evil. He just doesn't understand what he's doing. Oh, that felt good. Hmm. Every new life or thing he sees moving around, he interacts with it differently. For example, the scorpion. It's another creature, but he's never seen something like this before. He's never seen anything move before. So what does he do? He tests it out once more. He kills it. And he realizes that squishing things that move feel really, really good and makes him feel powerful. 
he's just a child. He is looking at his world through a brand new set of, okay, I was gonna say eyes, but that doesn't really work in this case. So holes, like rim holes, <laughs> what am I talking about? Then we see obstacles. It's so weird that they do this because this is a glass bottle. Obviously, he can't just crush this. And you're like, okay, so he'll just go around it or maybe he'll just go over it. But the thing is, he always wants to be in control of his surroundings. He wants to see that he's powerful. Kind of like that scene from The Lion King with Simba when he was roaring and he knows his father is mighty strong. He can make anything move out of his way. But when Simba roars, nothing moves, nothing takes him seriously. And this is basically what Rubber wants. He wants things around him to take him seriously. He wants to know that he is the king of his castle and that he can do whatever he wants and he is big and strong. This glass bottle is about to give him a piece of his mind and when he can't break the glass bottle like he could crush everything else, he gets upset and this is where shit starts to get real. You can feel the mounting frustration for poor Rubber here as he realizes that this thing will not pop under him. How dare this thing? It's insolence. He must teach it a lesson. It makes him feel weak. It makes him feel small and insignificant. He must defeat this thing at all costs. It's a bad guy. So I'm sure you're probably wondering, in this case, if he can't pop it, what is he going to do? Ooh, I know. Maybe he'll spin and kick it into the sky so that it can drop and break, right? Oh yeah, something else up his sleeve. Oh, just watch. This movie takes you to some strange places. Rubber, look at what you've done. You're the man. I mean, you're the wheel. So of course, just like us, since they also put us in the movie, the spectators are flabbergasted by this. Amazing. He just blew up a bottle without even touching it. Really? Let me see. That's odd. Looks like he has telepathic powers. You mean psychokinetic? That's awesome. I'm starting to like it. Wait, isn't that my guy Josh Gad? Oh no, it's Charlie Coons. Is that Dean Coons' son or something? Okay, don't get mad at me and say, oh, you think all fat men look alike. No, it's not your look. Look at him and look at Josh Gad. Like, okay, these are older pictures of Josh Gad, but there's a little bit of resemblance, a little bit. Come on, look at their freaking eyes and their eyebrows. You know what? Fuck you guys. They also do a good job at letting the audience know and reminding them that, yeah, you know, uh, you can't pirate the film. Yeah, she's right. It's piracy. I'd be careful if I were you. Well, my wife couldn't come. I was just... For sure. Yeah, it's piracy anyway. Anyways, we continue on the journey with Rubber and him discovering himself, also exercising his powers and blowing up things. He realizes he can also blow up cans. He also comes to the realization that using his powers like this is very fun after doing it the first time. What else can he blow up? Ouch! <laughs> wow. After a long day of adventuring, our beautiful little boy Rubber is so tired he can't go on any longer, and he settles down and falls asleep. Aww. So beautiful. I feel like he's our very own Pokemon. The adventure is so good, honestly. You guys should give it a watch because, man, I had never seen anything like this. I thought it was going to be total trash, but the trashness of it doesn't make you feel like you're watching trash. This is a freaking masterpiece. This, this is a true work of art. We follow along the movie of the spectators seeing the show unfold just like we are. Bitch, you guessed it! Wow, he stole from that guy. And I guess they're everywhere that rubber goes. They're out here away from their homes and they're starving, but they just have to see the show come to fruition. Waking up from his well-deserved nap or first slumber and sleep, Rubber drinks some water and gets ready for a new day. While he's drinking water, he looks up and sees a rabbit. And guess what he does to this rabbit, you guys? This is where you see his really soft side, where he actually identifies with another being, another living being. Okay, before living beings were really nothing to him, like that scorpion. But then he sees this cute little rabbit and he's like, oh my god, you're so cute. I just want you so much. And it's so cute what we see next. Oh, it's so adorable. He tries to communicate with the rabbit and, well, just see what happens. Beautiful work of art. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
Christ. Oh, God. <laughs> I can't with this anymore. I really can't. But now you can see there's a total difference in his confidence in the following day than there was before. Now it seems as though our boy is gliding on sunshine. He's not wobbly anymore. He has power. He has discovered who he is, like an evil version of Superman that was never guided by a mother or father with good intentions. This guy is just swaying along. He's like, oh, I like blasting things. I like squishing him. And I like squishing him with my mind. What else is there in this brave new world that I can conquer? For the first time, he discovers a road. A woman is driving by and he decides that I'm going to make her pop too. Don't stop! Pop that pussy! Unfortunately, even though his powers seem to affect her and make her sleepy from so far away, he can't really pop her head or do anything. So he tries to make her sleepy because that's all he can do. And then he tries to catch up to her. To think of it, I think he broke down the car, but it looks like he was making her sleepy too. Who knows what he can do with his powers? Rubber has his first crush, seeing a woman. The rest of this adventure involves Rubber just trying to get along about his life and discovering more of who he is and discovering more of the world around him. Of course, this guy, this little boy is the only one. This is freaking nasty, dude. But he's the only one who sees Rubber for who he truly is, a live tire. this kid tries to tell his father and he doesn't believe him would you believe your kid if they told you they saw a live tire going inside a room and locking himself in there probably not i just saw a live tire you got nothing better to do than come over here and start talking rubbish of course by now our little friend has killed humans and blown up their heads about three of them so far and all he's trying to do is just relax. He's watching some TV, he's chilling out, and the poor thing does not understand the consequences of his actions. The police and ambulance are all over the place. Rubber has jumped into the swimming pool just to relax, but I guess he can't find his way out of here. And the kid is trying to tell his father and the cop that, look, by the way, same cop that's part of the movie, it's so meta, apparently he's like a fourth wall breaker here. Or he can phase in and out of the third wall, fourth wall, Jesus, this movie has me so liquid, I can't even think straight right now, but nobody believes the kid that the tire's real. Take your fucking tire with you. You need to calm down. On came the Michelin man, who reminded them the right tire changes everything. <laughs> Terrible. Triangle eyes. So I'm sure you want to know if the story has a very happy ending. Yes. That was us, by the way, the spectators filling our faces with food, and we're gonna regret that later. Now do you believe me? This situation is not real. One more thing, as long as we the spectators are still watching, they have to continue with the story. And even though he's poisoned all of the spectators, there is one that was still left alive, the guy in the wheelchair. So unfortunately, the show must go on. Poor thing. Also, what does this have to do with the, the movie? Why is this a thing? What do you say? No reason. The spectators didn't eat the turkey. He's alive and watching as we speak. You sure this is true? Positive. You have to go on. All right. <laughs> this is so freaking stupid. And because of this, we continue and progress through Rubber's story. It seems like it's gonna be a very sad story for him. He uses his powers and things start to get really gnarly. This guy tries to poison this guy too, but he already knows the other people are poisoned. How can you try to poison someone when the bodies are in the background, lying there dead because they've been poisoned? This guy didn't care. He knows that he just wants to see the show come to fruition. But yet the glasses guy is like, no, you have to eat something, please. The guy's like, can you screw off? I want to finish watching this show with all the dead bodies lying around him. Oh, yeah. I feel like I'm not being a very commentator because I have no really, really no idea what to really say while watching this. It's 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 a very interesting experience. It leaves the mind almost brain dead, if I'm going to be totally honest. 
the movie finishes in a very anticlimactic way. Very, very anticlimactic, and they meant it to be so. But then, what makes things even more interesting is realizing that even though the show is kind of over in the sense of the word, it's not actually over at all. As a matter of fact, things have just gotten worse. Let's just say that's not the last we're gonna see of rubber. Shit myself. Be done with it. No, you can't do that. What about the dummy blow up? What do you promise, man? And bye. It's so sad. Rubber's gone, right? Or is he? This is what makes this movie so interesting. It understands its purpose. Just like Rubber understands his purpose. The purpose is not to make sense. It's to defy all logic. All logic and every logic possible. And it does this with such expertise. It makes you feel like you're not watching a bad movie. It makes you feel like you're actually watching something that was meant to be seen on the big screen. Stop here, man. Hey, wait! It's not the end! He's been reincarnated as a tricycle! Hey, wait. I'm not a character, I'm just watching. I'm very tired now. Well, there's a twist at the end, but I'm gonna let you guys discover that for yourself. This has been a very eye-opening adventure, and I really like the approach of this. It was very hands-on, very meta, very fourth wall breaky, and I loved it. That's what made it so special, and I really thank you guys for the suggestion, because holy crap, I have never seen anything like that in my life. That was a first for me if we're talking about experiences. I loved this movie, and... Jesus Christ, I can't believe I paid for this, but I really love this movie. It was awesome. It was so good or so bad that it was good, but so good that it was good. I don't really understand how, I, I don't, uh, I don't really know what to say. It wasn't bad. It was a bad movie, but it wasn't bad. It was actually done really well. It's freaking confusing. Anyways, thanks for joining me on the adventure. This has been awesome. This has also been Alciori. Thanks for watching. I don't remember what my outro is. You? Yeah. Th okay, okay, okay. I remember. This is an old story. You ask, we answer. Feels like something's missing. But oh, anyway, who, who cares? That's the end. Just like the, the movie said. And why can't I end this video? I got an idea.